What is up? I am Crypto Mason and welcome back to the Crypto Mason YouTube channel. Shout out to the Gold Squad. We look for gold in every single aspect of our lives and we always find it. Now today, we are back for another daily market update. This one is jam-packed full of info. We're going to talk Bitcoin analysis. There's some good macro analysis coming out right now um, that actually looks pretty bullish. So if we have a bullish title on the video today, that is why. Uh, we're also going to talk altcoins. I'm going to do some chain link analysis. Um, we've got some good stuff. So let's start off with a general overview of the market. We're at 1.72 trillion. So if we check the total market cap of the entire crypto space, right? We bounced off 1.6, 1.6 trillion. We bar just barely went under 1.6 trillion. The last time that we were under 1.6 trillion was August of 2021. Okay. Um, it was August of 2021. So this looks good though. We're, we basically had what I would call a flat bounce. Like we, we bounced, but it was kind of just a small flat type of bounce, right? Cause BTC, if we zoom out, Bitcoin has bounced like this, this has hit something <laughs> and bounced up, but it's, it's not, um, as dramatic of a, of a bounce as we want. Um, so looking at Bitcoin though, we can see that we have this RSI. This is the daily chart. Now we've been kind of focused on the 12 hour and four hour. This is the daily. We can see on our relative strength index, you have this in this huge trend line going from October of 2021 all the way till now and we're finally breaking out of this okay it bitcoin is finally breaking out um of that and m most people are drawing the trend line like right here but i think you can you can move it to here because you have enough like this this lines up like we touched here we're touching here 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 and here but we've now broken through that right so this is a good sign because every single other time Right, we've got Matthew Highland and BTC fuel here. Um, Matthew is showing that every single time the daily RSI breaks this, Bit Bitcoin goes up and it goes high. Right, <clears throat> we broke it right here. Bitcoin went all the way up from about thirty-four thousand to sixty thousand. We broke it right there again. So we had two conclude like two consecutive breaks there. Um, and we're breaking it again, but BTC Fuel says that um, Bitcoin has already broken out of the RSI resistance, which is right here. You can see uh, relative strength index. If you don't know, it basically measures if something is oversold or overbought, like too many people buying or too many people selling. Um, and it, it plots that on a chart from zero. You've got the zero line, right? And you got 30 when something hits 30 it's considered to be oversold 70 it's considered to be overbought and sometimes it goes above and below those numbers but what he's showing is we've broken out of this but we haven't broken this channel um on bitcoin here so you can see how bitcoin has been trading in this downward uh channel so basically we need to break 40k like we need to get back to like 45k and this will look amazing or like 42 or 43 even because that would mean we're breaking out of this channel here and we've already broken on the RSI. So maybe that's foreshadowing, but let's let's zoom out to some altcoins now. We have e Ether trading at uh, 2600, Solana still under $100. I think that's still a great pickup in my opinion. Um Cosmos is pretty high. Like I would like to get Cosmos at like 15 or 20, not 27. Uh Near is good at $10. <clears throat> also to show you bitcoin dominance bitcoin dominance has been increasing since january 17 <clears throat> it's been on a slow uptrend um, and now we're sitting at 42 32 um, so when btc dominance is going up but i would say bitcoin is stable <clears throat> i would say bitcoin has been on a stable actually you could say Let's see, January 17. Yeah, I mean, Jan uh, Bitcoin's been going down since January 17. So when BTC dominance is up, right, 
Bitcoin down, altcoins dump. I mean, this this is indicative of of um, or sorry, this altcoins are not dumping that hard off that, right? And that's I think because Bitcoin dominance is so slowly going up. Um, but let's go to so we covered this. Let's go to Link. I want to talk about Chainlink because I predict that Chainlink is going to have a nice pump pretty soon here. It's going to have a nice pump pretty soon. Um, I'm thinking up to $20, $20 plus. Um, one thing I want to show you, if we zoom out, look at this range right here. Look at this. This is a buying range, clearly. When that hits, when Chainlink hits $15, that is a buy. Immediately, that is a buy, um, in my opinion. And we can see... If we check the whale wallets, right, Link is in like the top 10 most accumulated coins by the top thousand ETH whales, okay? Um, and it's on the top nine, it's always on the top nine purchase tokens. Like if we go on seven days, uh, oh, Link is actually not on there in seven days. But on the 30 day, Link is on there um, and the 24 hour Link is on there. The whales accumulate Link, okay? They also accumulate all of these shiba inu for some reason um i feel like that might just be exchanges carrying the weight of that because there's some exchanges in the top 1000 wallets um but you need to um <clears throat> keep an eye on link you guys know i'm permanently bullish on link we can talk about metis dao as well right here um I'm going to go harvest this. As you can see, I'm sitting at $31 profit. That's literally from like 18 hours, right? I added more value. I added more Métis to my stake the other day. If you didn't watch the video <clears throat> right here, this video, I show you how to farm. Like I show you how to do DeFi farming. Um, and I'm just, I'm pretty much an, uh, <clears throat> like an intermediate level i'm like not a beginner i'm like in between beginner and intermediate of all of this hardcore like liquidity providing and DeFi farming and yield farming and all this crazy stuff um but i can harvest this right now if we click that right i'm gonna click harvest confirm and now boom i just literally harvested 31 dollars literally 31 dollars boom now I can swap that for whatever I want. I'll probably swap it for more Métis because I want to hold that long term. Now, moving on to some of the news and just insane information we have here. This is a hidden interview that I found that only had 2,000 views with Brad Garlinghouse. Um, and I, I'm going to play a couple clips from this. Let's start with this one. Uh, basically, he just casually mentions that Bill Gates... Like, Ripple is with Bill Gates, and we know this, but hearing him say it is crazy. Watch this. Names, but, uh, you know, we, we want to continue to grow. The other thing I'll just mention very briefly is Ripple's working with the Gates Foundation, uh, a pretty household name in, in some ways, yeah. and where they're actually adopting Ripple's open source technology. It's a technology that was developed here called ILP, Interledger Protocol. An Interledger Protocol is kind of at the foundational level of, you know, the, the, the technology we sell to banks today. We're working with them to take that type of technology to unbanked communities across the world. Hey, Travis. Right there, you can hear him. We're working with Gates Foundation, right? That's the whole Moja Loop connection. And they're bringing uh, banking to the unbanked. They want to bank the unbanked, which means they want to get people who are not in the system in the new system. Always keep in mind that Ripple wants to see XRP do well since they are invested in it. Ripple wants the coin to do well. This is a big misconception, and I'm going to let Brad just just take it right here. Watch this. There's some fake stigma out there and some misunderstandings, misconceptions about what's going on. The, the first thing is, fake stigma. Fake stigma. <laughs> so the, the first thing I'd say is Ripple, the company, is more interested in the success of XRP than anyone else because we own a lot of it. But one of the things we kept hearing in kind of that fake stigma was, oh, well, what happens if Ripple dumps our XRP on the market. Well, now the first thing I'd say is, why would we ever do that? that? That's not rational, but okay, fair enough. There's concern out there. How do we, we take that away as a concern? And so what we concluded is we can use as a proof point of our own technology, a feature on the XRP ledger. It's an escrow feature that allows us to lock up 55 billion XRP and every month, 1 billion locks up, unlocks for 55 months. Now, 
we're not going to use a billion XRP every month. At the end of that month, we will then lock up what we don't use into a 56th month and 57th month and so on. We use XRP for a whole bunch of things. One is as a centralized company, we you know pay our engineers, we invest in, you know, we pay, we incentivize market makers. We do things for the health of the XRP ecosystem. So by locking it up in the escrow, we kind of you know, took the, the, the wind out of the sails of those who are kind of spreading FUD that, that, hey, well, wait a minute, this could happen. We're like, well, no, no, no. Well, first of all, we would never do that. But because you're concerned about it, let's just lock up that supply so there's a known supply schedule so that, that you know people will uh, understand that. And that, you know, we So there you go. That's some of the rationale behind the XRP escrow. By the way, this is from four years ago, and this was when like XRP was pumping, right? Um, <clears throat> also, I want to mention, I hope that this guy stacked up Dogecoin because he will be very rich if he did. This was four years ago, and he has Dogecoin on his thing. I hope he was stacking bags because he would be very rich. Now, Hedera to be open. This is from Crypto Observer. Hedera's to be open source, decentralized governance, no CEO and CS roles. Those are abolished. They're moving from beta to the final code. Staking soon. DeFi soon. Metaverse soon. New, uh, new governing council members soon. Bridging. Come on. Like, come on, bro. Once there's DeFi <clears throat> on Hedera Hashgraph, I am going to literally, I don't know. I will, I will, I will just grow wings or something. Okay. I will literally grow wings. Now we're going to play this video. One minute, about a one minute. I know I'm loading this up with videos, but these are important. So watch this. This is Mance Harmon explaining, uh, explaining this. Um, and and we're dissolving the office of CEO and the office of CTO in Hedera Hashgraph. So Hedera will never have, as far as I know, will never have uh, another CEO or CTO. The council is making all those decisions. So it is weird, right? I mean, it is a totally different mindset and than what one is used to, certainly what VC have been used to and normal business practices of, of growing a SaaS, uh, you know, a, a SaaS startup or whatever. Notice he calls it a SaaS, which is a software as a service business. We've started from the beginning knowing that we were going to decentralize decentralize the operations entirely and put ourselves out of a job. And they knew from the beginning that they were going to decentralize the network. And that's what I was telling every single person in this video right here. This this video was like my first crazy like video that got a lot of views. H bar the sleeping giant with my afro hair. I mean, I kind of look like a sleeping giant uh right here but i was calling h bar let me get a close-up on it look at that ew man who is that guy look at the afro hair the no facial hair wow uh h bar the sleeping giant why you should buy hedera hashcraft and i i did like five hours of research for this video and this not decentralized part that's what i was trying to tell people is they have a ro they ha are on a path to decentralization like that's in the plans and I think that most of these moves of like open sourcing the code, no CEO, you know, making it all decentralized, this is to fit more in and be more accepted in the blockchain space and the crypto community. There's so much BS like and misinformation on XRP and HBAR. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. And, and people are just like, I don't know. It, it's like, it's really crazy. But Moving on, <clears throat> you can see, like, dude, once we have metaverses going crazy on HBAR, DeFi, once we have staking, HBAR doesn't even have, like, a TVL rating, right? If you go on DeFi Llama, there's not even, like, a place where you can view where's Hedera's TVL. That's what we're going to have, and it's going to be amazing, okay? Hopefully. I don't know how they're going to make it happen um, on Hedera. It'll, it might be a little bit different. Now, Carabo is pointing out this article right here. Um, basically the SEC has a new proposal that could be a disaster for DeFi exchanges. Basically they, they want to broaden the definition of an exchange to any system allowing buyers and sellers to communicate their securities trading interest. Okay. 
Um, if enacted, this proposal would likely make it impossible <clears throat> for DeFi exchanges to comply with SEC regulations. Now, I wanted to rope this in with this article that just came out yesterday. The unhosted crypto wallet rule is back. This is an old rule from 2020, <clears throat> which basically enforces KYC, which is know your customer. KYC means like when you send in your ID, it's know your customer rules on unhosted or self-hosted crypto wallets. Um, basically, there's a bunch of wallets that can't comply with this because they're not controlled by people. So clearly there's stupid old systems that they're and their old rules that they're trying to apply to crypto can't apply. There's different stuff here. There's a whole different world that you need to regulate in a specific customized way. You can't just slap current security laws on this, right? Um, but like basically this this uh this is the ten thousand dollar thing, right? Customers who transact with over $10,000 in a single day, um, basically they just want to collect, this forces exchanges to collect names and house addresses and attach it to crypto addresses so they know who you are. <clears throat> now this, like all of the rules on exchanges are just going to make like DeFi exchanges better. You cannot regulate a decentralized exchange. So a couple little regulation things to cover right there. This seems like they're just bringing old stuff up. It's like they it's like this whole crash has been like really like propagated and just like I don't know, it feels weird. But ending off Dennis Porter, uh senator from Mississippi introduces a bill to recognize Bitcoin in the state code. So not a legal tender thing, but just recognizing Bitcoin in uh the the state code. So that is all we've got for the daily market update. I appreciate everybody who continues to watch these, especially if you made it to this far in the video. We are still flying on this golden timeline. Uh, well, I'm going to be here forever. I am on your screen for infinity. So you can count on me to always be there throughout all of the future viral moments that are going to be in crypto, you know? Like, we've already had so many, so many great memories on this channel like the Dogecoin SNL thing, <clears throat> um, all the XRP lawsuit hearings that have just been so hilarious. Go back and watch some of those. It's just legendary. I'm here on your screen for infinity. I love every single one of you. If you want to connect with me more personally, Twitter and Instagram are way more personal. Go follow there. Appreciate all of you. I love all of you. And goodbye.